welcome our next TED Light Talk speaker. Design education is such a vast landscape, so in my humble presentation, it's the journey through my decade of experience in design education. It is not the design education, it is through what I've experienced I want to share with you. Uh, let's start with a quick overview of the foundation of design education in India. Uh, it all started with NID in 1961. Uh, there was a report by Charles Eames. Uh, which was called the India Report. Based on that, NID was established, and perhaps the first cadre of design graduates in India came out in late 60s. Post that, it was the IIT Industrial Design Center in 1969. That gave way to launch of NIFT, which was focused on fashion education in 1986. And then in the late 90s, there were a number of design schools which came up over the next few decades. Uh, there has been a growing prominence of design education over the last 30 years. Uh, particularly if you look at these two examples, 30 years ago, that's what designers used to create, the famous Nirma ad. And uh, in the last 30 years, it's changed to more an app on your screen and user experience design. And so has design education evolved to cater to those needs. Um, when NIFT was established, and there are so many NIFTs now, for a long time, uh, design education was focused on uh, fashion at scale, uh, which has over time now shifted to solving design problems, is what you use experienced designers do. Uh, this is one of my favorite quotes. Uh, it says, design adds value faster than it adds cost, and I'm sure all of you here agree to that. Uh, and that is established by a McKinsey report their subsidiary Design Management Institute in 2015. It said that they studied S&P 500, US S&P 500 companies between 2005 and 2015, and they found that design-led companies' stock market performance was 211% better than the companies which are not focused on design. So there is established data there. Uh, I've been in higher education since 2006. I started my career by establishing a school of economics and finance and management uh, in collaboration with London School of Economics uh, in UK. Uh, they have programs in Delhi. And uh, economics is a great discipline, a bit like what UX is today. Everybody thinks there's a lot of money, and that's why they want to study it, right? Everybody wanted to become an investment banker, so they go and do an economics degree. And uh, we had a really good one uh, with the London School of Economics. Uh, my experience there was most of the learners there weren't in love with statistics or maths or economics. Right? They just came to study a degree because they wanted a good career. Right? Nobody got up in the morning and I said, I'm going to do differential equations today. Right? I have a feeling it's probably the same for engineering and many other disciplines in India. Um, so about 2012, eh, about eight years of my running an education institution, I realized that perhaps I want to do something where people are really happy and excited to come to campus. Right? Um, and uh, I'm from Delhi, so I did my research in North India. And I found that there were hardly any design schools uh, in NCR and North Indian region. Uh, some of the public and private prominent ones were mostly focused on fashion. And as I showed you in the previous slide, that design has moved way beyond fashion uh, into mainstream. And that is what led to the idea of establishing a design school in Delhi by the name of Indian Institute of Design. Um, we took about three years to put it together. Uh, we had a mission to bridge gaps and build bridges between design, society, and industry by transforming how design is taught, learned, and practiced in India. It's a mouthful, I know. So when we set about setting up a new design school, this is 2015. Uh, I've run an education institution where you have chairs facing the teacher, and there's a sage on the stage giving you lectures. Right? That is the most boring way to learn. Uh, we've all experienced that as students. Uh, in IID, we had the opportunity to have a blank canvas to set up a campus and a space and a way of teaching, which was unlike traditional subjects. And design gave us that opportunity. So we set up a model in which we teach in a studio-based environment. 
All courses are taught through projects. Uh, there aren't any classrooms in our campus. And uh, a lot of practitioners come and teach with us. Uh, being in Delhi, we have that ecosystem. Uh, these are the images of what you can see our campuses. It's a really interactive and immersive learning experience. And it took us time to get it right. You know, we started in 2015. Uh, 2019 is a four-year program. Uh, it took us many iterations to get that methodology of an experiential learning experience. I mean, learning should be joy. Learning shouldn't be a means to just to get a job and earn. Um, that's what I felt in my previous role there, running an economic school. And I wanted to change that. Um, and we're very fortunate we got a bunch of great people together who were equally passionate about re-looking really at how education is delivered. I think Professor Jain before me was a great segue because when we think of user experience design, I don't know, it's always digital in our head. It's an app or something. But I think the most important experience a user experiences is either in an education institution or a hospital, right? Those are life-changing experiences, far more important than the Zomato or Uber app or a pixel here or there. So I think for us also as educators, curating a user experience is really, really important, right? Making it joyful, engaging, and entertaining. And um, we do believe over a period of time, uh, we were getting better and better at it. And just about when we got comfortable with our philosophy of teaching, things were settling in, COVID happened in 2020. Uh, I especially remember it was March of 2020, and uh, we all had nightmares, right? Couldn't sleep. How do you take this immersive, hands-on, project-based, you know, studio-based learning experience onto a computer screen, right? Nobody in our staff had ever used Zoom or Microsoft Teams or you know, whatever Google has to offer, because there was no reason to use it. I think many people just never used it till COVID happened. And um, if you were teaching a lecture-based course, that was fine, because I just switch on the screen and give a lecture. But we don't have a lecture-based course. It's a really hands-on, tactical, uh, tactile way of learning and teaching. So it hit us, and uh, we couldn't do much about it. And um, if you're aware of any company which was in the online education space, they probably, their valuation and funding went up like 200, 300, 500,000 X, because everybody was forced to study online. You're sitting at home, there's no other option. MOOCs, which is massive online open learning, was growing at a rate of maybe 20, 30 percent till 2020. In one year, it grew 700 X, right? Uh, a lot of traditional institutions took on the aspect of teaching online education because COVID forced us to do so. Um, I really wanted to show you this video. It's, could, can you play the video, please? Is, is it working? Okay. No? So, like everyone else, we had to go online. It wasn't a choice. And... Uh, we handed a laptop to all our faculty and said, we need to figure this out together. And um, we took that as an interesting opportunity rather than a threat. So we invested in a really, really amazing learning management system, um, which is uh, used by Harvard and Stanford as well. And uh, we spent a lot of time working with the faculty to rework the pedagogy on how to teach in an online environment, trying to keep the spirit of the studio and project-based learning intact. Uh, which was a huge challenge for us. Uh, but when you're thrown a problem, it's a do-or-die situation, you do your best. And uh, when I talk about our faculty, we teach foundation and designers first year, where you teach sculpting, where you teach fine arts. I mean, these are the people who don't really know how to use a laptop really well, let alone teach online fine arts or sculpting. Uh, so it was an interesting challenge. Uh, but we took it upon ourselves uh, because we had to deliver a course. We can't abandon a degree halfway through. And uh, these are just some of the glimpses of how we went online, like everyone else. And the challenge for us was that how do we replicate that learning environment that we spent you know, half a decade figuring out in an online space? And uh, I think through a lot of iterative trial and errors, we kind of got that right. Uh, that also, well, COVID ended in 2022, and then we came back to our campuses, and life in our campuses back to how it was. 
But what happened in 2021 and 22 is it gave us a moment to pause and reflect about campus-based education versus our online experience, right? Because when we taught online, we were teaching six to seven hours a day, five days a week for a whole year. So we had over 5,000 hours of delivery in that two-year period, right? Um, so some of the reflections that came to us to be able to compare and contrast both methods of delivery, specifically in a hands-on design education approach, was, uh, you know, I think if you are able to come to a campus and spend those three or four years of life, there is no doubt it's an amazing experience, right? But there are certain limitations uh, about that. So one is accessibility, geographically. Uh, we have learners who are mostly, half our learners are from Delhi NCR because we're a Delhi-based campus. Maybe the other half are from all over the country. Many of them who are high school graduates wanted to study design, could not relocate to study design with us because there could be family and cost consideration. So that is a drawback of on-campus based learning. Second question of accessibility is demographics. Uh, if you want to come and study with us, or let's say an NID or NIFT or anywhere else, uh, you've usually got to be 18 years old, finished high school, or perhaps maybe 22, 23, coming for a master's. So you, it's only accessible to you at a certain age group in your life, right? It's very unlikely that a 30-year-old will come and enroll for an undergraduate program in India, right, or anywhere in the world. Um, a third aspect is affordability. Uh, to create an 85,000 square feet campus in a space like Delhi is a very expensive and time-consuming process. Getting regulatory approvals is a pretty tedious and time-consuming process. And that leads to a higher cost of delivery and then higher fees. So we would love to teach many more learners, but because of the cost structure, the system we teach, that becomes very difficult. And the last point is industry relevance, which is a really interesting point because I think academicians for the last two decades have been trying to figure out how do we get industry practitioners to come and teach with us because we want to know what's happening out there today. A lot of faculties are not practicing, so they're not in touch with changes that are happening, and particularly in fields like UX, Things are changing really, really rapidly. And with the advent of AI, probably will change a lot more. Uh, that is another challenge. Uh, we have some amazing people in Bangalore or Bombay, uh, but getting them to fly down, pay for the hotel stay to teach or lecture for half a day is not going to happen. Um, those are the things we could solve through an online delivery system. At the same time, uh, this is an interesting stat which might surprise you. It really did surprise me. Uh, it was an article I read in the Hindu that India produces one design graduate for every thousand engineering graduates. Now this is about 2002 or 2003 year old data, uh, sorry, 22, 23 year old data. So maybe one has become two, I guess, I don't know. Um, another article from Times of India states that the demand for designers in India is about 62,000, where else the supply is about 7,000. It's interesting, I was talking to some of the industry professionals who are here today, who are senior mentors, senior industry professionals, and none of them have actually formally studied design. Uh, perhaps because at the time when they were going to college, these opportunities didn't exist, they just learned it on the job. So clearly, there is a huge mismatch between you know, supply of design talent, right, and demand of design talent in the country, compared to engineering or management graduates. And then there's the other problem that, you know, the brick and mortar institutions uh, cannot solve the problem at scale. As an example, 85,000 square feet, tens of crores, we establish one campus which has 1,000 students, only 250 students graduate every year. That's it, right? And for us to create another campus like this will take us another five years or seven years. So we, all brick and mortar institutions cannot add capacity at the rate it's required, at the cost that is affordable to a large number of people. With our online experience, coming from a campus-based education background, we wanted to solve this problem. And um, that is when, in 2022, we launched AND Academy, right? AND Academy is trying to skill designers at scale, uh, also solving the problem of accessibility and so and so forth, right? So, as there are designers in the room, the, the logo was worked upon and it represents upskilling, because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to skill, uh, you know, tons of designers across the country at a vast scale. 
So we were trying to solve these three problems. We wanted to make design education accessible, affordable, and industry relevant. That, that, was, that was a problem we were trying to solve, and scale, of course, on top of that. So coming from that background of brick and mortar teaching for a decade, uh, replicating that for two years or 5,000 hours of teaching in an online environment, we realized and got the confidence that I think we can do it. Right? We want to problem solve the problem of how we can make it far, far more affordable and accessible. And I think online and the adoption, people were, the two years taught everyone how to use Zoom, Teams, Microsoft, you know, and so on and so forth. It was no longer apprehension either from the learner's point of view or the mentor's point of view. Uh, these are actually what our live classes look like. So they are cohort based. So we take a cohort, and the cohort is restricted to learners of 30 to a faculty as we teach in a classroom. So we just basically said that whatever we teach in a studio, in a classroom, how do we replicate that in an online environment? So we do four star three starts a year. A session starts every four months. Uh, we have programs which are a certificate, a diploma, and a PG diploma. They are stackable qualifications uh, in graphic design, interior design, and UX UI design. So we solve the problem of industry relevance as well. Now that we are in an online teaching environment, we can get mentors from anywhere in the country, frankly, time zone aligned anywhere in the world to come and teach for us. Um, we have mentors who are you know, established stalwarts in their own fields, who are teaching not a master class, but a whole module, because the classes are 7.30 to 10.30 in the evening twice a week. Um, so Shiva is based out of Bangalore, Ekta is in Gurgaon, they all work for reputed companies, and there are many more. There was, in fact, a mentor of ours, Nishtha, who took a session today, uh, a class today, um, and she's actually based out of Goa, right? So the access that we have to talent to be able to teach is amazing. And I think my interaction with all the industry mm. professionals is they love to teach. Uh, I'll leave five minutes. Uh, they love to teach. We just can't make, them, make it accessible for them. In fact, what's happened in AND is that the kind of people we've got to teach is something we'd love to have in a brick and mortar campus in Delhi. But again, it's a geographical problem. We've solved it here. Second was about impact and access. While we couldn't create impact and access in a brick and mortar school because of the fee constraints and location constraints, I think AND is unconstrained on these aspects. These are some of the quick stats. You know, in about less than two years, we have uh, you know, had 950 learners from 200 different cities. And when I looked at the list of cities, I don't even know half of them, right? So we were able to reach out to learners in tier three, tier four cities, tier two cities, who are not in Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, who do not have access to a physical campus or a physical space, or the quality of faculty they would get. We solve the accessibility problem. Anybody who's 18 years old and above can come and study with us, right? So there is no age restriction. There is no location restriction. And uh, our average learner's age is about 25, so they're mostly young graduates and working professionals. 75% uh, of them have completed their graduation degree. What is very interesting is a stat, which is about their backgrounds. Even we didn't realize that, that only about a third of them come from design background. You know, 70% of them do not have a design background. Let's say I did a degree in engineering or management, and when I was 24, 25, I realized I have an interest in design. Right? Why can't I pursue that while working? Right? I don't have the money or the time to give up my job. Right? This whole problem of work and learn need, needed to be resolved. Um, so this was what gave birth to Tan Academy, and this is how we are trying to solve problem about skilling designers at scale. So the future of design education, which mm. is muddled, I'm also not very clear on that, but I'll just give you a short example. Your designers in the room, you know this very well. Uh, AI is here to disrupt all industries, including ours. This is just an example of somebody in my design team gave it to me that this would take about 24 hours to make on Photoshop physically, right? And uh, an AI-assisted software can make it in 24 minutes. So if all the design that you've learned is how to use Photoshop, you're already out of the job, right? You're redundant. That is not a skill. You need to learn design thinking, principles of design, the practice of design, right? That's more important. And our delivery is really focused on that, right? That's just a tool. 
Then the question really comes to, and I've had these debates and discussions with a numerous number of people because I sail in two boats. We love our brick and mortar campus and we are scaling our online design scaling venture. Which one is it? Is it online or offline? Um, I'm happy to have that discussion with you later today. But for me, it's not an either or. It's a, we're solving different sol problems for different people at different points in their life. If you're 18, can't afford to come to a good design school, there is no better experience, right? Um, if you're 24, 25, you found newfound passion for design, I don't think a brick and mortar design school is gonna solve your problem. So I think they both have their own space for different times of your life, different situations of your life. But the problem for us as educators is, coming back to the question which you know, Professor Jain was talking about before me, is user experience design. And I think us as design educators need to really think about the user experience we're going to provide, whether in an online setting or an offline setting. Uh, if you're going to, in the future, come to a campus, it better be an immersive, interactive experience. Um, these are renders of a new campus for ours, which we're setting up in Gurgaon. And we're kind of taken it on board that you're coming to a campus because the coming to the campus is an experience, right? We can teach you online on a computer. Why would you come to a campus? We've got to make it worthwhile for you to come to a campus. It cannot be the traditional classrooms which are facing one way. You're coming to campus for collaborative work and collaborative experiences. And it applies the same to Ant Academy, that if we do not give you in those three hours that you're coming to us after your day's work an interesting, immersive experience, you're not going to come back to us. Right? So we do also spend a lot of time thinking about how do we curate the right experience for an education that will have an impact on your career for the rest of your lives. Thank you.